Hey guys and girls, hey gang, thank you for joining me once again. Mark Ummy here of course, and surprise, surprise, we're gonna talk about photos and video. Uh, today what we're doing is we're having a look at the old flash benders. Now, I did a video some years ago and I got a reasonable amount of views for that one, but there was a few holes that I'd left out, uh, a few little details. One of which was some sample photos of what I'm talking about. So when I illustrate, I use this size flash bender in this situation, it's appropriate that I should have a photo to illustrate that. So I'm gonna try and include a few of those. Uh, secondly, what I'm talking about here is the context, not of a studio shoot, of course, because I'll use very large octo boxes or something for that. But uh, for here is, uh, it's on the fly when you're on site somewhere, let's say you're at a park or it's a, a formal gathering, perhaps a wedding reception, and you're constantly moving around. So one minute you're in a reception area, the next minute you're outside in the garden, and then you may be back inside a church or a hall. And so because you're moving around, you can't take great big uh, lighting equipment with you. You need something portable and flexible and something that won't break easy as you're moving it around or become an, uh, an obstruction to view. So these little flash benders that I have here, and here I have two of the, uh, well, I call them the large size, but for me it's the small size of the two I have. But this is the large flash bender, and it's a great unit. But over a period of time, when you're putting it in and out of your camera bag, it uh, can get a bit limp and uh, scrunched up. And then what happens is when you try and uh, keep it firm on your camera, it just looks a little saggy. So how do we uh, go about keeping that firm and erect and making it uh, most efficient and always optimal in its performance and so looking nice and firm? Well, I'll tell you how we can do that. I have a little trick. I just put this one aside because I'll show you how I keep it in this sort of condition. You notice how firm and this one is? How it's not flopping around? Well, there is a little trick to it. See, at one stage, what I used to do is I have a little cage inside it. I made a little wire cage, and that was quite efficient. It puffed it out. But that just also created an issue because then it was less compactable and you couldn't scrunch it up and keep it folded in your camera bag. So in order to fix this problem, what I've done is I've changed around how I keep it firm. So let me show you this because this is a really good tip. Right? Don't, don't uh, you know, turn the channel off now. You watch this because you're going to love it. So how do we keep these flash benders going nice and firm? Well, the trick is inside them, when you open them up and there's that little diffusion panel, of course, you'd be familiar with, I've created these little perspex. Can you just pick that up? I'm sure you can. If I flash it with the lighting there, I'm sure you'll see the uh, dimensions of it. But there you go. It's a little clear perspex plate. And at the bottom, it has a little tongue, if you like. Now, it's obviously, obviously I've cut them out exactly the size for each respective flash bender. So here on this, what would they call the large flash bender, you'll see that that'll tuck inside. And then when I put it in, you slot it inside here, cut it out to the right shape. And all you need is a pair of scissors and some cheap perspex from the local hardware store. This is not something difficult. Just buy the best quality, uh, maybe acrylic or, or, you know, whatever you can get that's the most firm, but light and weight and thin. It's only a couple of mils thick, but that's all you need because you're only trying to puff this little soft box out. And when you put that in, of course, and you uh, fix it onto the flash, and let me just illustrate that to you. I've got a speed light here. You Once you put that in, of course, the uh, shape of the speed light now helps with puffing it out too because obviously it's got some volume to it. And now when you have it here, you'll see what's happening as I put it all together. You've still got that volume now. If you look inside it here, you can see that there is some volume. So when the light goes in, it's got some area to bounce around and diffuse about, but it stays firm and in position. So it's not collapsing in on itself and being you know, not efficient anymore. So I thought that little bit of perspex is a great thing to show you uh, how you can utilize that to keep the flash bender always at its optimum ability and performing at its best. Uh, so that way you get maximum surface area for your diffusion. Now here I'm illustrating here this one here and it's it's obviously the smaller unit of the two and this is excellent for if you're having something say on camera. So if you want to set this on camera it's actually just about the right size that you can have it on without it being too awkward or uh, inconvenient or big wind resistant parachute to blow over your camera as you're trying to take a shot and the wind sort of blowing you over. It's, it's a sufficient size to be in control. So I just thought I'd show you that one. I use that large one when I'm using them generally on camera. Now, for the extra large, which is this one I have here, I have two of them, of course. With these ones here, what I'll do is just put that one aside because I don't need to show you that many. Uh, the extra large one I like to use on the light stand. Now, these are actually awesome on light stands because although they're not anywhere near as good as, say, a big five-foot octo box, when you're out in a park and it's a little bit windy, 
you try and carry a five foot octa box around good luck with that uh, a it's intrusive it draws too much attention and b one slight gust of wind and that thing's flying over and maybe injuring someone so you need something that's practical and these things are extremely good for that they're very very practical light diffusers that you can bring around their uh, narrow profile of course also helps with not being very uh, annoying with the wind blowing them over. So uh, what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna illustrate how you put the big one on and show you that it's exactly the same design as the small one. So if I just open that up, I'll just make sure that clip is firm and tight. So I'll open this up now, we'll just pull the Perspex out. And you can see again, it's exactly the same as the previous one. The only difference now is it's a bigger size. So it's a little bit bigger size of Perspex. Again, I'm just flaring it on the light so you can sort of get a better idea of its, you know, you know, relative size, etc. But there you go, very thin, simple bit of plastic. It's nothing technically hard. You've just got to make sure you measure it out very well. Use the uh, flash bender as a stencil, if you like. And uh, just make it just, when you cut it out, make it just that little bit too big. And then what that'll do is when you put the whole thing together, it'll tend to arch a little bit, and that helps with the puffing out of the flash bender and keeping it both A, firm, and B, a bit of volume inside there for the light to bounce around. If you make it too small, it'll sit perfectly fat and almost, flat sorry, and do almost nothing. So you do want it to be just a little bit oversized. The other advantage of cutting it out oversized is that if you find it is too big and doesn't work for you, you can always trim it down. Once you cut it too small, you can't add anything to it and it becomes useless. And of course, don't forget to leave, when you're cutting it out, leave that little bit of a tongue there so that it has something to be firm. Otherwise, it'll just flopple around like inside and not do much of anything and just collapse in on itself. So this little tongue area here is really valuable. So again, we're just placing it inside the flash bender once you've cut it out to the uh, exact right size. You find you don't even have to open the flash bender up in any way with all the Velcro on the sides. You just pop it in and there you go. Now how quick and easy was that? And it'll keep it nice and firm. Just gonna put my little speed light in there and show you how that all works for you. So we pop it in the center, always have the tongue down first. In through the little strap, we bring it around nice and tight. Obviously I'm not going to try and snap it off tight, but just firm tight. And there you have it, you've got a perfect little system. And you can see how that's retaining its shape. You can fiddle around a little bit with it, because it is flexible. These blue bars on the back are bendable. That's the whole idea of it. And so you can shape it out. But here you've got a little bit of volume in there. You can see inside it, that if I get it just in the right angle there, you can see inside the actual unit, you can see there is some volume. Don't worry about leaking light out the bottom. There's almost nothing leaks out of there. It's insignificant. I wouldn't even concern yourself over that. But you place it on and there you go. That's gonna be a nice soft box for you that's actually portable. And of course you can put them in your camera bags. So it depends on the size of your camera bag. If you've got a more modest camera bag, take one of these with you. It is flexible still, even with the Perspex in it. It's not like you have to have it firm and flat. This can still bend around a bit. You can tuck it into the edges. You'll get it in a, a modest camera bag. These larger ones here, for example, I have a very large camera bag because I've got multiple cameras and multiple lenses I bring with me and accessories. So I've got a large camera bag and these will easily fit inside that. You know, sometimes I have to just tuck the little edges down to make it fit into the corners. But other than that, you can get them in. And really, this is the beauty of it, because as I've always said, it's not so much how great the lighting is, is it perfect, but sometimes it's just whatever you've got with you. And these things you can have with you wherever you go. Both portable, they're light, they do scrunch down a little bit, and so that makes them very, very uh, flexible and useful in, in their uh, you know, value. So I'm um, just wanting to show you these. I think they're really awesome. I've always been a big fan of the flash benders. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'll just show you uh, putting it in a camera bag. So just give me a second to go get one. So hello again friends, here we are, I've got my little camera bag here, now this is a more modest one, a smaller one that I'll take with me just like on holidays for example, just show you inside, just a traditional camera bag, nothing particularly special about it, but it's a more modest size one. It's empty only because for illustration purposes I don't want to be moving it around and have stuff spill out all over the place, so just we're assuming that there's camera gear in there. Now we're talking about the various different flash vendor sizes and how they're appropriate for different camera bags. Now here I have that what they call the large, or for me it's the smaller of the two. And as you can see, you can pop that in there on top of all your camera stuff. So you would have your lenses, your camera gear, that just sits on top and there you go, you fold it down, you zip her up and she's in there. And you can take it wherever you go. So you've got one speed light, you've got a camera and some lenses, and here you go, you're ready to move. And now you've actually got some decent diffusion with you as well. So that's very practical. Now on the other end of the scale, and look, it's not the biggest camera bag in the world, but it's certainly my larger of the two that I bring with me, that I'd actually wear, that is, you know, like a, on your back. And uh, this one here is a little bit bigger. 
but as you can see, you can still put the flash benders in there. So what I'll do is I'll put them in like this, and I'll just simply have all the camera gear in there, of course, and just tuck it in the corners. So it'll still go with me. And there you go, as you can see, you can fold that up. There we go. This is always awkward when you're doing everything upside down and backwards. And there you go, you see it fits right in there, and no problem, you can bring that with you anywhere you go. You can bring two of them, I mean, they are very flat. If you can fit one in, you can fit two, you can fit three, because there's almost no volume in that way. It's a very, very flat unit, and they compress down really well. So uh, I really wanted to well illustrate that uh, plastic. Uh, I thought that was a valuable uh, illustration to show everyone. I use them everywhere I go, I think they're great. The plastic costs a couple of dollars in your hardware store, pair of scissors and there you go. And uh, you'll always have them looking very professional, sorry, very professional, clean and tidy. Now you might have noticed they just slipped out on me and that's actually something that does happen. So I would like to uh, illustrate how I repair that and how you can make sure that that never happens to you. So here we are, we're back again, we're talking about these flash benders and I can tell you what, the last thing you want is to, to all collapse and fall apart on you at the last minute. And when I'm carrying them around a lot, and often I do a lot of one-handed photography, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about the camera in one hand and I'll hold the speed light out with a flash bender in the other, and that way I'm extremely portable and I have no uh, light stands that uh, trip hazard and annoy people so much, particularly the security. So that's an option you can get used to and practice on. I did a video on that previously. You can have a look if you're interested. Uh, but right now I'm just going to show you uh, my secret weapon. When you put these things together, and again I'm just going to show you the strapping of them together. It's very simple. The speed light just goes into the center. It's obviously a tongue area and a little firm support. Place it over. Here we go, and that's strapped on. Now, generally that's pretty good, but if you're moving around a lot with it, that can fall apart, it can just slide out. So what I do is I just use a bit of PVC tape. See this little black PVC tape? Again, it's like a $1 spool from the hardware sh the shop. It's just like electrical tape. It's not very expensive and it's easier to come by. Because it's only like a dollar a roll, you can afford to use it and throw it out and you know be done with it, and every time you use it, you just put another little spool around. We're talking a dollar for a whole roll, so you're probably using 10 cents worth every time. But you notice what I'm doing here? I'm just wrapping it around the top of the speed light a little bit, just a few times, like that. You just break that off. There we go. If you've got scissors, it's a bit tidier, but I'm in a hurry. So here we go, we just wrap it around, thumb it around, just to make sure it's actually got a touch and a grip on the speed light. And now it's not going anywhere. Now it's not gonna fall off. So you now you can shake it upside down, that's never gonna come off. You can have it on a light stand, you don't have to worry about it blowing off and coming away. So that's always going to be in position, be firm and uh, very sturdy. So what are these two things that we've been speaking about today? We've been speaking about a little bit of clear plastic that costs a couple of dollars from the hardware store, a couple of uh, rolls of tape at a dollar a piece, and for a very, very little and small budget, you can make these uh, flash benders incredibly useful lighting tools anywhere you go. So on the subject of these uh, lights to go, a lot of people will use a speed light and they might use something like this. They'll have the speed light on top of their camera and they'll directionalize that at the individual they're taking a photo of and they'll basically terrorize them with this harsh specular light in their face. Now, I don't think that's a great idea. I don't like that at all. What I'm using here to illustrate here is uh, it's a colored gel and uh, these just magnetize on and that's a, a means of using backlighting or coloring the environment. Now, I'm not encouraging that directly at someone, but this same kit also comes with a diffuser and they just magnetize on. So how simple is that? Now, this is an excellent, I'm not gonna say that this is the uh, answer to all your lighting problems, but what it is, is it's still a softer option than direct. So if you are really lacking in space, you can't afford to carry even one of these around with you or it's just too burdensome, uh, you can use something like this. It's a silicone gel cup. It's completely scrunchable, as you can see. You can't destroy them, you break them, you can stick it in your pocket. If you scrunch that up, you can put it in a coat pocket or in your bag. If you're a lady, you've got a handbag or something, put it in there and it takes very little room. And of course, it just clips on. It's not gonna blow off. You're not gonna knock that off easily. And uh, there you go, at least you've got some sort of a diffusion. Now, the idea of this sort of thing really is it's a bounce all over arrangement. So if, even if you had it straight up and down, you can bounce it off the white ceiling and the white walls, and it gives a nice light in the area. So it's good for group photos or inside photos. But again, we're really sticking to the idea of something a lot larger. Uh, the more surface area you have, the better the lighting is. But I'm well aware that there are times 
times when you just can't be uh, as fussy as this and you've got to use something that's a little bit more practical for situation. But please, I'm just encouraging people, whatever you do, don't use the direct flash in someone's face. That's not fun for anyone, not for them, and it's not any fun for you because the photo quality is terrible. Oh, let me just show you something here as a little tip. You may notice that around the speed light here, some of my speed lights, I have a bit of Velcro. Now, it's particularly useful when I'm using accessories. Why is that? Well, let's say I'm using these little magnetized gels and I'm transporting around a lot and I'm putting them in and out of the camera bag. It's very easy for these just to keep coming off and it's annoying to find them and hunt around where they are. Now, particularly at night, I want you to think about this. This thing's black. <laughs> A flat black item falls down in the ground at night. Good luck finding that on the road or something. You almost got no, you could walk over it and not even see it. So what I do is just to make sure they're safe is I have that Velcro as you can see on the speed light. And then with this little bit of extra Velcro that I bring with me, I push that over the top and now it can't come off. I can't lose it. So even if it gets bumped or not, the accessories aren't gonna come off. And that means just a bit of security when I'm moving around that I know I haven't lost any components. As soon as I wish to use it, well, it's just a matter of ripping away that little bit of Velcro. And you can even put it back around the existing Velcro to keep it tidy so you never lose it. So again, these are just little tips that I'm showing people with uh, speed lights, just general lighting on the go that I think they're great little tips. And I'm encouraging people to use their imagination as well, come up with different ideas and share them online because, you know, we could all use a bit of inspiration from time to time, hey?